Hi, previously I've uh, made a video of um, setting up the uh, milling attachment and now I'm actually using it. I'm actually making a um, parting tool tool post out of a uh, square piece of al aluminum, aluminum bar or aluminium depending on where you come from. And this is it to actually set up on the, on the milling attachment. So uh, we're going to be using the milling tool to cut a slot on the side of this which will form the um, mount for the parting tool or cutting off tool. So here we go. <laughs> My metal supply comes from a foundry where they were casting alumin aluminium or aluminium uh, and these are the risers they cut off afterwards. This is where the metal is poured into the mould and is cut off after the mould is completed. <clears throat> so they looked like this before I worked on this. Uh, this is the end that I've cut off the bigger piece that was 75 millimeters diameter. Here's a smaller piece. What well, it looked like so I had to part of the end of it, which I'm not showing you since you've seen that procedure before. Then I turned it down to a piece of a nice regular bar, take all the rough material off the outside. That probably wasn't really necessary because the next thing I did was to put it in a forward jaw chuck. So I placed it in a chuck like this and made one side flat, turned it around, did the other side, and then the other two, other two sides to make four sides. So I ended up with a square piece of bar there, about 50 millimeters square. Here's a quick and dirty way of checking the uh, the parts of the jaws here are horizontal is just to put a level on the lathe and the lathe isn't quite level but I just notice exactly where the bu bubble is and then adjust this piece here so that the bubble is in exactly the same position so I know that's level. Then when I put the work in I can check that this has the same level position as well. Now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, check that it mounted correctly. So I've got a dial gauge here, it's a magnetic mount, you just turn this uh, around and the magnet inside locks it down onto the lathe bed. So there they are, it's locked in pretty firmly. Now I'll position this so that the tip is actually touching the top of the work and giving a reading. And turn the dial around so it reads zero at that position, actually I'll move right to the across end of the piece of material first. And then I'm using the cross slide to move the whole Milling attachment across, and I'm finding that this far end is lower by quite a bit. So, if I want to get the slot cut on the side of this um, at right angles to the material, I'll have to fix that. So, I'll use these uh, Allen screws um, to adjust the clamping. There's a clamp on the top here that clamps it onto the slide, the vertical slide. Shooting here at the bottom of the slide, you can see there's a metal bar in there underneath and it's uh, got two screws that go into T-slots and keep adjusting these screws until the dial gauge reads no change as you move across. So it's still getting higher at that end. I'll loosen the other end a little bit and tighten this end. Getting closer and uh, I repeat this process until I get it looking pretty level. If I'm not careful I'll push the uh, bar off the back end Fifty-five, fifty-seven. That's good enough. Okay, um, and then we can actually do the same thing to check the um, whether the milling adapter is positioned correctly this way. So I'm going to do the same thing and uh, move the cross slide across and check that it remains. The same distance that I was out by 20 thou almost. So I need to loosen the spigot on the base of the milling attachment. Dial it, you can change the dial around to read zero and go back. Yes, within 10, 12 thou. So I think I'll leave it there. It's quite tricky to get that just right. And that's how it looks like. So I'm now going to use this um, screw at the top. To screw up and down um, and move the work on the milling tool which is in the chuck and this is a 12 millimeter end mill it has got a conical section in the middle where it doesn't cut so you can only go to that depth of about two or three millimeters before you have to start moving the milling tool sideways now i'm going to check that i'm making the slot in the right location here so i'm using the depth uh, gauge on the vernier caliper digital vernier calipers here and bring it up to the end of the work and at 69 
0.13 and 2. Um, want to be slightly, should be 69.5 ideally, 69.87. I think I'll leave it at that and I can trim a bit off it later. I'd rather take too little off than, than too much. So the cross slide handle is in the horizontal position. I want to make sure it stays right where it is. But that is tricky because there's no way of locking the cross slide handle. Just have to make sure it stays at a 3 o'clock position. Okay, I'm ready to start cutting, I think. Um, I'm going to go in first using the longitudinal movement of the, um, of the carriage first. I've got this set up at my maximum speed, which is 1300 RPM, as these uh, end covers can really require uh, 3 by 6. That's as far as we'll go because it forms a cone in the end of the uh, area you're cutting which prevents it from going any deeper so to make multiple cuts. So now I'm going to be moving vertically, moving the work up, and as I do so the uh, end mill cuts the slot. Ah. You weren't supposed to see that. Now this tool post is going to be mounted on the back of the cross slide, so when you back off the cross slide it brings a tool onto the work. Uh, but I need to drill a, and tap a hole um, to put a, a bolt through to mount the post on the back of the cross slide. The cross slide was removed by removing the uh, milling attachment. You may recall that the compound slide was held in place with two grub screws and you use an allen key to loosen those uh, grub screws in order to lift the cross slide out. Well the milling attachment is connected exactly the same way, you just slack off these two grub screws, lift out the compound, the either the compound slide or the milling attachment. So uh, then you just turn the cross slide handle all the way until the cross slide just comes off the end of its thread and it can be slid out the back very easily. Now I've mounted it in the drill stand, ready to drill a hole. And I did this with a series of three different size drills and then place a tap. This is a give plate that fits in here. And it's got a little peg right about here that fits in the groove to stop the plate from sliding along. I don't think it'll go the other way around. No, because the chamfers on the sides of this give plate are like that. And they need to match the slope on the dovetail. So I'm not sure why it's hanging over one end like that, but it uh, looks to be the way it is. And on the same side as the gib plate, you've got the gib screws for adjusting how much pressure is on that plate. And that's these screws here, and each one of them has a lock nut on it, and can be adjusted with an Allen key. And uh, we just need to tighten, well, loosen off the lock nuts first, then tighten up each Allen screw one at a time until it just starts to grip and then back off a fraction of a turn, and then tighten the lock nuts. That should give us pretty good um, adjustment to prevent any play in the dovetail. So this is the uh, nut that screws along the um, Acme thread here and moves your slide backwards and forwards and I can feel a fair bit of play in there so that's where some of my play is coming from I should really replace this nut I think they are available um, and it just goes through a hole in the cross slide and when you screw up this grub screw it pushes a, a ball bearing on or a little bit of a rod sideways and locks it into place in the, in the, the uh, cross slide but um, yeah that is fairly worn and that may be part of my problem so uh, one little trick I've heard is you can put it in a vise this way and just squeeze it and force the threads back together a little bit. It's going to take a fair bit of squeezing actually and I don't want to make it so tight that it causes a problem as I don't have a replacement handy and to cut an internal Acme thread is uh, not a trivial task. So I'm going to put it in a vise, squeeze it a bit, put it back on and see, that, see if it's a little bit tighter and repeat that until I get satisfied I've gone far enough. If 
If you need to make a new nut, I'd recommend looking for Enots Engineering on YouTube. Alan gives all the details you need, specifications and dimensions, and apparently this isn't actually an Acme thread, although it looks like it. I cut a recess on the bottom of the tool post uh, so that the tool post itself is clamped against the cross slide rather than the nut on the bolt. The tool post is then clamped down very tightly with this bolt and actually it uh, distorts the aluminum enough to clamp onto the actual tool holder and in this case the tool holder is a wide one with a tungsten carbide tip in it. Notice that it's mounted upside down because it's cutting on the back of the work as it rotates in a normal direction so you don't have to reverse the motor for this but the tool is upside down. It's not really clear why this makes such a big difference to the way the um, parting tool works but it's been suggested that the upside down tool allows the chips to fall away uh, much more readily and prevents them from falling into this narrow slot and jamming the tool. That could be part of it. Another factor is that this tool post is much more rigid because it doesn't go through the cross slide. If you put it on top of the cross slide you're going to have the all the parts of the cross slide uh, contributing to movement of the tool post. This does actually prove to be far more effective than uh, placing a parting tool in the regular tool post. Perhaps it's even convenient because you can leave it there and use it whenever you need to rather than having to remount it each time. So this thing is designed to take uh, two different kinds of tools. Here you can see a silicon carbide tip inside a special tool holder. It's 16 millimeters wide so I've made two different slots that I've milled into the tool post. One for the 16 millimeter tool holder and another one for a half inch tool holder. You can see the slim slot in the tool post here, which I had to cut to make the tool post flex so that it would grip onto the actual tool holders. And I had to extend that with a hacksaw until it reached about a quarter of an inch or six millimeters from the edge of the, of the bar. Both the tool holder slots were using a common bottom level, which is right at the midline of the lathe. So the tool should be automatically centered to the center of the lathe. But the tool itself can be cut away, as you can see in this example, which is a half-inch wide high-speed steel blade that's been ground. And by grinding, you can um, alter the height above center of the tip of the tool. You may be wondering why I made this out of aluminium. It's merely a matter of having the material handy. And uh, I wanted to use a very large block of metal to make it very stable. And I had this large block of aluminium. And I thought it would be easier to mill than a mild steel post, although mild steel would probably be a more suitable material. We had extensive discussions on the Boxford Users Group about parting tools and the whys and wherefores as to what techniques work. And this seemed to be the best option to me. But I'd recommend uh, that you look at the Boxford Users Group to see the discussion and many other very useful discussions and extensive information about the Boxford lathe.